Hey, what's going on guys and girls? This right here is the Motorola One Action. Most of you probably don't care, but the unboxing experience feels premium. Compared to some other budget phones, the packaging feels more like something you'd get from a $500 plus phone. The phone itself already comes pre-installed with the case. That's really nice to see. And then we have all the quick start guide, a SIM ejector tool, and then there's a USB type A to a type C charging cable with the power adapter. Okay, let's uh, take the case off. And uh, here's the phone. It, it looks nice actually. On the back side, it's got a triple lens camera setup with dual tone LED flash and also a physical fingerprint sensor. That is nice to see. So that means there's no on-screen fingerprint sensor. And I can't really complain because usually the physical fingerprint sensors are faster than the on-screen ones. Both the power and the volume buttons are on the right side and they are made out of plastic just like the phone. At first I thought this was made out of glass, but then I compared it with my OnePlus 7 Pro which has a glass back and I was able to tell the difference. Unless you're used to using premium phones or you have a glass phone next to it, then you can't really tell the difference. Because overall this phone is well built and it just feels like a quality phone. If you have used the Samsung Galaxy A20 or A50, that's kind of how this phone feels like. One thing I've learned about these fingerprint sensor is that it doesn't matter if it's an on-screen or a physical one like this one, you have to register your fingerprint on it twice in order for it to be more accurate and have less chances of failing on you. Finally, I'm done setting up the phone and the first thing I can notice is how smooth the phone is running. I don't expect this to be blazing fast, but I do remember when I was setting up the Samsung Galaxy A20, it wasn't as responsive as this. And that also might be due to the fact that the Motorola One Action comes with stock Android. This has a 6.3 inch display with a resolution of 1080 by 2520, which gives it a pixel density of 432 PPI. The screen looks very sharp. It's actually comparable to my Note 10 Plus in terms of sharpness, how clear the texts look. The Note 10 Plus has a pixel density of 498 and the One Action has a pixel density of 432. This probably sounds like I'm hyping this phone, but I'm just giving y'all the facts out here. I don't know if you can tell by the video, but the phone has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. It, it's like a little longer, not wider like regular phone screens that you might be used to. And some people might like that. I kind of like it since I can use the phone with one hand, even though it's got a pretty huge 6.3 inch display, it makes it easy. So I've been using this phone for the past week or so, and the camera on this is actually good. It has a 12 megapixel wide camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. I'm not prepared to run, but you know, the wide angle lens really does make this look nicer than it is well it is really nice actually it's a beautiful day today this just shows that all these other brands are just hyping their brand name and just charging too much for their phones because look at this phone you can get it for less than two hundred dollars it has a great battery life a great screen a great camera oh it's crazy man it's crazy like the samsung galaxy a50's camera is nothing compared to this phone's and the galaxy a50 costs more than this i respect motorola for this they put out some great hardware for people like us and some of us don't even know about it Here's a picture I took of the Blue Yeti with the Note 10 Plus with no flash. And here's a picture I took with the Motorola One Action of the Blue Yeti with no flash. Look at that. Look at the difference. The Motorola One Action's photo clearly looks much better in this one. Front facing camera. The camera on this phone is nice enough to vlog for sure. Just from looking at the screen, the quality looks really good. One thing I've noticed is the front facing camera takes better looking 4K videos than the back facing camera. I did a whole vlog test video with the One Action's camera, and if you want to see that, leave a like. If this video reaches 30 likes, I'll upload it. Like I was saying earlier, physical fingerprint sensors are faster than on-screen ones, and here's my proof. I compared it with my OnePlus 7 Pro, and the Motorola One Action's fingerprint sensor is like just a little quicker than the one on the OnePlus 7 Pro. In terms of battery life, this has a 3,500 milliamp battery. It gives me a full day of use, and I really have no complaints about it. It is pretty good. I get around like five hours of screen on time. As for the performance, this has Exynos 9609 chipset, an octa-core CPU, and Mali G72 MP34 GPU. So far, I haven't had this phone slow down on me. As long as I'm using this 
phone wisely like i don't have a ton of apps running in the background or anything like that then the phone is going to be all right i play call of duty on high graphic settings and it doesn't have any issues it runs it like a champ i bet there are so many other great phones i've never heard of but i feel like you might know some so if you do let me know in the comment section down below so I don't have a lot of cons about this phone, but I do have one and it's that hole punch camera right there. I know they could have done a better job. There's a whole chin at the bottom of the display where they could have moved the screen down and had that camera up there without intruding the display, but I guess it's just the trend, so. Also, there's some bleeding happening around the selfie camera and on the bottom of the screen. It's not really noticeable as long as the background isn't white. So who is this for? I think it's for anyone that wants an inexpensive good smartphone. As long as you know what you're getting yourself into, then this is definitely something you should check out.